Hi everyone and welcome back to Curly and Yarny. My name is Milena and I'm very happy to welcome you to my channel and to today's video in which we will be weaving dish towels. So let's get started right away. So today I'm starting this video already sitting at the loom. So a, a few weeks ago I have posted the video in which I warped my loom for uh, this project. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. So I will put it uh, right here, but also I'm going to put it in the description down below. So feel free to go check it out. So in this video where I uh, warped my loom, I introduced to you the yarn I was using for this project. And if I just do a quick recap, so uh, here, they, here they are again, so uh, very quickly, uh, the, those two combs of yarn are 8-4 cotton from Hobby. Uh, so I have them in two colors, so uh, this one is ash and uh, this one is cornflower. And so I'm using this uh, two yarn in order to uh, weave uh, the project but also for the warp, so I'm using the same yarn all the way through the project. So I've already uh, warped the project and again very quickly I've used my 7.5 head all and I've singled my warp into my head all and so now I am weaving it and I am singling uh, my uh, yarn as I am weaving. And now I don't want to keep talking so much, I want to get already to the loom so uh, I want to uh, show you what I've made so far. So I'm going to show you a little bit how I'm doing the pattern uh, for the first towel because I've warped for two so first we're going to check the first towel and uh, then I'm I uh, will show you more in detail uh, how I'm doing the hands tooth on the towel. So let's get to it. All right, so and now we are ready to start the weaving. Uh, so as with most of my projects, when I have a, a pattern in my warp, I like for my first towel to follow the uh, pattern of the warp. So I usually read my pattern from left to right. So uh, the first thing I'm going to weave is a, a block of gray to replicate this part here of the pattern or if you prefer this part here as this is symmetrical it is the same <laughs> so let's get started <laughs> So as you can see, I've decided to hem stitch those towels. So those towels are woven with 8-4 cotton. So uh, by definition, they are a bit thicker than what I'm used to because usually I weave my towels with 8-2 cottons. And I felt like if I were to hem those towels, uh, that would make bulky hem. And it could be okay, I guess, but I've decided that for those one, I would rather have just some nice, cute little hem stitch edge. And I'm going to leave some fringes on the towel as well. Alright, so now I would like to explain to you a bit more in detail my uh, pattern. So as I mentioned, I am uh, doing what I have in the warp into the web, but I feel like this needs a little bit more explanation and a little bit more indication about how I'm doing this. My warp, I like to uh, separate it in three parts as if I had three big blocks of color. So I have one in the middle, which I like to call the blue block of color. And then on both sides, I have uh, the two gray blocks of colors, which are identical. So uh, during the weaving of the uh, towel I'm going to alternate between those blocks of colors. Since I've started with the gray, I'm actually started with a gray block of color. So I am weaving about two and a half inch of gray. Then I moved on to uh, the middle of the block which is the hunt's tooth pattern. So I'm going to go more in detail uh, about how to weave a hunt's tooth pattern but in a nutshell in my hunt's tooth pattern I want to weave two picks of each colors and alternate those two picks. So uh, for my towel, I wanted to weave, weave them for about three inches. It meant that I wove two picks of blue, two picks of gray, two picks of blue, two picks of gray, and so on, until I had woven seven pairs of blue picks and six pairs of gray picks. And then I moved on to a weave with the gray again for another two and a half inch. So at this point, I had woven a uh, one block of color. So then I moved on to the blue block of color. So this meant that I will for two and a half inch of blue. So this time the Hans tooth pattern is actually the reverse of the other block. So I did seven pairs of picks of gray and then six pairs of picks of blue. And 
and then I wove for another two and a half inch of blue and then I alternated those black soft colors all the way through the weaving of my towel All right, so and now I want to show you more in detail how to weave hands tooth. You're going to see it's super easy. The trickiest part is at the uh, selvage part, but I'm going to uh, explain to you all of this. First of all, before weaving hands tooth, I want to explain to you its kind of structure. So uh, when we warp the loom for hands tooth, we warp three sections for it. And in each section, what uh, we did, we uh, simply uh, pull uh, a loop of each color and we alternate those colors. So by doing this, what happened is that I have two threads of each colors and those alternate. So I have two threads of gray, two blue, two gray, two blue, and so on. So when I'm going to weave the hands tooth, I want to replicate this. So I want to weave two picks of gray, two picks of blue, two picks of gray, two picks of blue, and so on. And when those will interlace, then this is when we are going to see the hands tooth pattern. So first of all, uh, let's uh, start with uh, the first color. So uh, now uh, my uh, my if I follow my pattern, I've just woven about two. And a half two and a half inch of gray and uh, I'm going to keep the gray on the loom so I'm not going to cut it and uh, I'm also now going to add the uh, blue to the loom so first let's put this in all right so now the blue is attached and when I attached it I uh, wove one pick so I need to weave now a second pick Okay, so now my two first picks are woven. I'm going to keep the blue attached and now I'm going to weave with the gray. And now uh, this is when it gets a bit trickier because I finished weaving with the gray here. And now I wove two picks of blue and I'm going to keep weaving with the gray. So my yarn has to travel quite a long path around the selvage. So my selvage will be looking different than the selvage here. So here my yarn, it goes around the last thread and makes just a little, little loop. But here, since it has to go over two picks of the other yarn, it's going to make a much bigger loop. So here we see the loop it made. Uh, I'm going to do it in blue, so it's going to show a bit more in blue since that my uh, warp is also gray. So let's do the blue the exact same way. All right, so here we see it right here. So now I'm going to go in with the uh, gray. And now I'm going to tell you a bit more about this selvage. So when I weave my pick, I try that my yarn that I'm weaving next with would go underneath the yarn I've just stopped weaving with. So here I've stopped weaving with the blue, so the blue yarn is still here. And I slid my um, shuttle underneath it in a way that the blue yarn would be on top and then the new loop of my new gray yarn would be underneath this last thread. So let me do that a couple of times. All right, so one more time. So here's my gray yarn. I've just finished weaving with it. And now I wanna keep weaving with the blue yarn so i've just done two picks of gray i need to move on with the blue so i want my blue yarn to be underneath the loop i'm going to create it needs to go underneath the yarn i've just finished weaving with so i'm just going to throw my shuttle in and now my loop is underneath just like that Now I'm going to show you uh, what I'm doing with my shuttles to achieve that. So uh, when I'm finished uh, weaving, I put the shuttle 
the closest possible to the head all so that the next head all would be the uh, closest to me so I always take the one that is closest I take it and I throw it inside of the shed so that's my first pick and so here we see the blue yarn is what I finished weaving with it's taking out here and then my gray yarn the next one is going around it but underneath it so that is how I want it to be so now I can be and now I'm going to do another thing So I've just finished weaving the two picks of grey. I put the shuttle closer to the heddle, which means that now this blue shuttle is the one closest to me. So now this is the one that I am going to take. And then automatically by doing so, my yarn will be placed just the way that I want them to be. So I can always push that one forward to me after that. And so... Now automatically my grey yarn is on top, my blue yarn, my newest yarn is underneath it, so I can now beat. I want to show you what ha is happening at the selvage when we do this this way. So this here is a normal selvage, so one little uh, loop of yarn after each pick and here now this is the selvage when my yarn needs to travel a bit longer so it makes longer leaps but it is pretty cute I really don't hate the effect it gives it's just a little different than what we are used to you might be thinking but Milena what's going to happen if I do the reverse so if my uh, new yarn goes over the last yarn instead of underneath and I'm going to try it out right now to show you So here let's look at my selvage. Uh, so uh, at the beginning here I rove uh, in a way that my uh, next thread would always go underneath the last thread I wove and here is the other way around so my next thread was going over the last thread that I wove. So it's really not a big difference. The biggest difference is that here I wove, I, I wove, here I wove a little bit looser just that I can see it a bit better. But really the only difference is this, it's kind of the direction of the loop. So here the loop looks like it's going from left to right and here it goes from uh, right to left. It is very subtle uh, but I find that when we have like all the edges going exactly the same way on one side it is pretty good. and when we have it going all the way like sometimes on one side sometimes on the other side sometimes it might be something you want to look out for to uh, achieve a nice uh, selvages. It just reached the 35 inch mark of my towel. I like my towels long. I feel like uh, by being long they uh, hold better on the uh, handle of the stove. <laughs> so uh, I am going to keep weaving. So I have just finished uh, one uh, block of color. So the blue block of color. And so now I would be re ready to weave the uh, gray block of color. So this means uh, 2.5 inches of gray. Then the hands tooth pattern. And then another uh, 2.5 inches of gray. So this would bring me a little bit uh, more than 40 inches, but that is fine with me. I want my pattern to be uh, kind of symmetrical, so if I were to finish here with the blue, uh, well, it would be different. The end of my towel would be blue and the beginning was gray, so it would actually be a bit different. It doesn't matter that much, I could have lived with it, but since that I have some wiggle place, some wiggle, since that I have some wiggle room, I will simply keep weaving one last block of color. Alright, so now this is finished, so I am just going to leave some enough yarn to uh, do the hem stitch and then we will be off to the second towels. If you're curious, this towel ended up being about 44 inches. I will want 
to uh, leave some fringes on my towel so maybe about uh, two inches for this towel and about the same for the other one so I might need to advance it a bit more all right so let me look at this so two, four, and I can start weaving about here for the next towel. So before I start weaving the next towel, there's something I wanna share with you. All right, so uh, welcome back. Uh, so here's what I wanted to uh, present to you. Uh, so uh, a few months back, uh, the company BenQ uh, reached out to me because they uh, wanted me to uh, try out uh, one of their lamps. Uh, so they wanted to see if uh, those lamps would be a good fit for weavers. Uh, so I gladly received uh, this uh, lamp from them and I have, have tried it with uh, my two different looms to see if it could work well. And let me tell you, I really, really, really like it. So let me tell you more about it so this lamp actually is a table lamp so it came with a base but I felt like uh, the base was like very big and very heavy and it was not exactly the perfect fit for weavers uh, unless you weave on a table then uh, you uh, would uh, like it maybe but I felt like for my looms I needed something else so uh, they gladly gave me this add-on clamp that uh, I just had to replace the base with this clamp was very easy to do and now with this clamp uh, i have full versatility with the lamp so i can clamp it on pretty much anything so now it's clamped on the shelf next to my loom uh, but i can also uh, clamp it right to my dirty loom very easily and it is very big and sturdy so it stays there so uh, the way it is designed there is all this part here that is the light so let me just open it so now you have more light but you don't see my face anymore <laughs> also uh, there is this those two branches that are adjustable so I can adjust the height of the lamp but I can also adjust its direction so I can push it forward or I push it a bit more to the back so here is the on and off button so it is uh, activated by the touch so it got a little bit of a use to for me because it first doesn't really look like a on and off button but also since it is sensible to add a touch well sometimes by just trying to move the lamp around I would touch it and then it would turn on or off when I didn't want it to but once you get the hang of it it's actually pretty cool then there is a second button that is found right here so this one would change the intensity of the light but also the um, heat of the light so if I put it on and then I can put it a bit lighter or even more stronger I can also by pushing it change it so now it is a bit warmer or a bit colder and I push it back and I'm back to changing the intensity so now let's talk about the most important part about this lamp which is the lighting so the way the lamp is made it has a curve to it and this actually allows for a wider range of lighting which I found it to be very useful because it is wide enough to light the whole width of my loom and since that my loom is 32 inch wide I find it very impressive that it is all very well lit with this lamp so overall I must say that I am very pleased with this product and if ever you uh, were uh, curious about this well I'm going to link uh, all uh, the info about this lamp in the description of this video let's talk more about this second towel so if you've been following me for a while you know that uh, usually the first towel I would try to replicate what I see in the warp inside of the weft and then for the second towel or the second whatever I'm weaving I'm always trying to kind of like try different things but it's always a bit calculated so I do like count all the threads or all like the inches of what I weave in each color but for this time I want to go out of my comfort zone and I want to try to loosen up a bit so for my second towel I'm not actually to follow a pattern I'm not actually going to calculate everything I'm gonna try to go with the flow and uh, so there's two reasons for this but uh, the first one is that at school right now I am trying to get out of my comfort zone for many things I'm learning different things and next week we're actually going to weave a um, sari and this is not something I'm very comfortable with just going with the flow <laughs> so I want to try to uh, do it first here and I feel like this might um, be good for me because by doing this I feel like I might be able to do some discoveries and I will maybe try to get a bit more creative I'm trying to have the second part a bit more spontaneous so let's see how it goes still I still kind of have a concept for the second towel I cannot go totally on a <laughs> spontaneous and uncalculated so that is not me at least not yet so for the second towel I still want to have a lot of hands tooth in it I this I really like this kind of pattern but I will try to have it less like square 
query just as my warp so I will try to uh, play around with the uh, like different sections like sections will be more blue some more gray but always with a lot of little Hunstoot insert inside of it so let's just start and go with the flow so first let's weave a few picks of gray so let's start in the up position and the first few picks are always a bit trickier when I advance the warp like that and I need to give it some length in order to do my hem stitch again so let's see what I've got here so now I've got one two and three times the width of my project so that's perfect and now I want to place it about four inches from where I left off the last one and I also want it to be quite even so let me check that Now weaving the last few picks of my warp and I'm really trying to push the limit of this warp. Since that uh, the first towel I wove it a bit longer, well this means that this one will have to be a little bit shorter but I really want to make it as long as I can so uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get into a very very small shed here at the moment. I'm uh, helping myself with a pickup stick that I have slid uh, at the back of my loom so this helps me get a neater shed especially in the down position. and. I'm trying to get one last uh, inch woven so I'm now at the 35 inch mark so I really wish to have 36 inches. Let's see how it goes. So welcome back, so I would like to do a little recap of this project and look at the towels I have just woven. So first of all, let's look at the first towel, so it is this one here. I really really like how it turned out, it is exactly what I had in mind, so you can really see the warp and the weft coming into each other and like a cohesive form. Then we're going to look at the second towel, so uh, this one is the funkiest, so this one I was inspired by uh, the stir of the moment, so it was a, most po po it was a more spontaneous weave and uh, I like how it turned out, I feel like I'm going to uh, draw a lot of inspiration from uh, this second towel uh, because uh, as I've mentioned in my first video about the warping, in those cones of uh, yarn I have a lot of yardage, so I still have all of this left so I could make many other towels and I find that uh, I tried different things in this second towel that I will be able to uh, replicate or get inspiration from for my uh, next towels. Uh, for example, I really like the part uh, where I uh, wove like big chunks of blue and just one little stripe of gray. So uh, this might be very nice, I think, if I were to repeat that all the way through a towel. Also, after wet finishing, uh, the yarn uh, really uh, just like fill out the space, it, the towel shrunk also a little bit but with all of this uh, we uh, started to see the hand stood pattern really come in, into form. Of course the colors I chose for this project are more like uh, pastel, they are a bit light so the contrast of color is not huge so this is why the hand stood pattern is not 
super loud out there but after wet finishing this is really when we started to see the pattern way more and now I just want to circle back to the yarn I used for this project so I use 8-4 cotton and as I've mentioned in my other video it was the first time for me using solely 8-4 cotton in towels and especially using 8-4 cotton from Hobby and I really liked the, the experience I really enjoyed it I can say that it went by much faster so this yarn is a uh, thicker than the 8-2 cotton I'm used to weave with if there's one thing I can say about the yarn is that I found that uh, after with finishing when I started to uh, trim the fringes on my towel I uh, started to realize that it made a lot of fluffiness so I have like a, a lot of uh, loose fiber floating around the room I feel like there's a lot of those fiber or fluffiness stick to my shirt I don't recall that this happened also with other cotton I've used before so I don't know if it's only this yarn or I just have a very a bad memory of other yarns uh, then uh, for the rest of my impression of the yarn I guess only time will tell so only time will tell if I find that they are as absorbent as the other towels I have uh, woven with other yarn uh, one other thing I want to tell you is that uh, I've decided to hem stitch those towels. I did not hem them and I have hesitated for a while about doing a little zigzag stitch at the edge just to secure my ends even more. I've decided not to do it but I'm still like thinking maybe it could be a good idea. So I'd be curious to know if you are used to weaving towels with 8-4 cotton, what do you do? Do you usually uh, hem them? Do you hem stitch them? If you hem stitch them, do you do a zigzag stitch? So uh, I will be very glad to read your advice on this. So this is it for today's video. Thank you so much for uh, watching it and I hope to see you very soon in the next one. Bye bye!